Hey folks, Dad here with Elevation Diecast Racing 400 subscriber special. And uh, we're going to be talking about the subscribers and and um, how Mile High Raceway came to be, what we've done to progress, and some of the things we'll be featuring on the channel. We took a poll last week on what would be popular to see or what subscribers would want to see and don't blink suggested subscribers. it was a Johnny Lightning Challenger series race with the JLs taking on some Hot Wheels designed back in the 70s and 80s and all I can say to that is it's on because I'm all for that fast Johnny Lightning on the track we will get them against those 70s and 80s Hot Wheels for sure in an upcoming event as the weeks and months come to pass here and also coming up um, a lot of matchbox older matchbox super fast i do have a race um already in the works it'll be hot wheels versus matchbox eight and i will be rolling some older super fast this is just one of them stock car we're gonna dust him up and we'll see if matchbox can finally take a series because hot wheels uh, has dominated this particular uh, event hot wheels versus matchbox i don't think matchbox has ever won so we're hoping to change that this time around and uh, this is where i keep all the cars it is just to give you an overview so there would be the start gate all the way down to the finish line so this is just you know where I keep all the cars um, speed shop where I build cars make them faster it's a mess kind of organized mess but this is it um, all the five packs for the five pack challenge number two waiting to get into the speed shop so this is kind of like a more cars down here and then still filtering through boxes of cars that you know i just there's so only so much i can do um but we've been going through them racing these um and then you know certain cars will keep around and then when I say real riders, when I have the real rider races, um, it takes a lot of real riders to find the fast ones. Every one of these have been down the, the track and they are all Dudley Doolittles. They're slow. And so they're just on the shelf. Whether I'll part with them in the future most likely will. Um, right now, this is just where they sit in the real rider parking lot. Down here, um, the day is coming where I'm going to take some track and build me an RC track for these 164 scale RCs. And we're gonna have ourselves an RC race one day. So uh, that'll be in the weeks and months to come, I am certain. And um, it should be a lot of fun. I've also been toying with the idea of putting a switchback track back here. Um, I'd have to probably go up and out a little bit would make it a tight fit, but I don't know. Uh, I can do some rearranging and um, we'll see about that as well. So on the flip side of this, we'll get into how I made the track, uh, what I made it out of, the dimensions, the heights, the degrees, the angles, we'll get into that on the flip side of, of behind the curtain. All right, we're back and uh, we're back here on the track. And uh, this is a seamless Hot Wheel track, a little wider than standard Hot Wheel track you would buy at Dollar General or somewhere. Um, the track is exactly 20 foot 7 inches 
from the Slandman Custom Start Gate. It sits at a 28 degree angle. Okay, so on an incline down here. All the way down. It does stand seven feet. So it starts seven feet and it goes down seven feet to a gradual incline. And this is, this is vinyl ranch rail. So I build fences for a living and I come across these 16 foot um, rails and they're very bendable if you use structural screws, which I have uh, to tie down and it makes a nice even transition, gradual transition. And lay the track down on it. It sits pretty smooth. I do my best to keep it under 70 in here. Um, and how I do that is with one of these Arctic airs in the garage and I keep my AC on in the living room on the hotter days. And I had made it as level as possible. I have the Derby Magic timer, elapsed time, two lane timer. Very well, works very well with the Slamman Customs start gate, um, little bean bag stop. Um, it is seven feet um, at the top, and it gradually goes till we get to the to the finish line. And so that's how I built this. It's all reinforced down here, so it doesn't move. Um, lighting back here, um, lighting up here, and I. Not done yet with the track. I um, have a few ideas of uh, having this come right out of the mountain in the start gate. And uh, a couple of folks have given me some ideas. So we are looking to go a little further in depth and detail with the track. Um, laying alongside the track, this is always, you know, the Formula One that's the case for those faster ones number one of course is the minecraft flip car and then some gnx's i've dusted up and we'll roll them soon and you you may notice some of these cars laying on the side here um some lesney m2 so it's different brands Just something different to put out there. This particular particular van was one of Isaiah's first negotiations. We got at a flea market, and uh, they were asking thirty six dollars for it. And Isaiah said, "Well, I'm not going to pay that." And I think he ended up talking them down to sixteen or something. But this was Isaiah's first. Uh, he really wanted this majorette foregone, made in France. <laughs> I can tell you Sikus are greater than majorette. <laughs> At least right there, you can kind of see the difference in the craftsmanship. Wish that car was faster, but he is not. So he's just, uh, he sits over there in the line to represent Siku presenting the Johnny Lightning he's a dud but he can sit on the track so that's the story there a couple of Isaiah's favorite his favorites the Mustang and the Bugatti and uh, he loves this Bugatti here it's one of the um, uh, 
Mystery Model Series 2006 and he really likes this Mustang. Um, you collectors out there know what this Mustang is and how pretty rare it is to actually have one in that good a condition. And of course Isaiah's SVO. I'm going to dust this one up later and throw him on the track and see how fast he goes. And then another one of his favorites is this club exclusive. This is um, one of the very first exclusive cars we got from Brass Armadillo when we first got into collecting. And he, was, he really wanted this um, Mustang Boss Haas. And then his other favorite is this super treasure hunt we found over at Shields for a dollar forty nine back in the day. So he's really stoked about having that ride. And uh two of those favorites of his up here on the treasure hunt, super treasure hunt and exclusive wall. And so my favorites on this wall is the first treasure hunt, super treasure hunt me and Isaiah ever got was from the Brass Armadillo the same day we got that Mustang. And so this will always, um, this will always be like a, a car that we, we really like having around. It's our first treasure hunt super together. We had to buy it and not found in a while. Then, and this one Isaiah got at Timber Dan. He, I kind of turned him loose with some of the money he earned and he got me the 68 Cooler Eliminator. Um, so if, that's one of my favorites um, out of this bunch here of the many treasure hunts and chase cars that we do have. Another favorite of mine is a Mr. Bean. I need to find the one with the chair on the top of the roof. That's uh, ever a classic. One more interesting um, thing that I've come across in uh, collecting is the Indonesia variant of this Power Pistons treasure hunt. Um, I got it back in Christmas of 2021, I think. And uh, Malaysia based is your single, you know, basic line. And Indonesia is supposed to be for your five packs and 20 packs. You don't get an Indonesia base um, on a single card. It's it's definitely an error, a variation. So I was neat to come across that. I actually found that out from Mike Zarnick, uh, the Hot Wheels historian up in New York. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So, for the subscribers, I mean, I really appreciate anybody who will send in cars and, and race just out of the blue. and We get cars as gifts from the races and just, you know, trading off here and there. And it's always uh, very, very fun, uh, this hobby. Uh, a lot of great... Uh, a lot of great folks associated with this hobby. Gotten quite a few um, cars that have been added to the collection. Pretty cool. Stretches over to the Johnny Lightnings. Just very cool castings. Um, cars I never knew existed. Cars that I haven't seen before. Never knew that car existed. <laughs> Just really neat. Uh, really appreciate um, the camaraderie of this hobby. So with that being said, we're always testing cars. Um, these are leftovers. These are B-side candidates that are not just quite fast enough for the case. We will also be 
in the inaugural race at Redline Salvage, Inc., rolling on the Texas Giant. This is one of our entries uh, so far. Isaiah is going to be racing as well. Old vintage red lines. Definitely looking forward to that. And we have already sent cars over to the Chase Family Racing, where we'll be, we will be in the Mustang Jack Tournament at the end of this month. That should be fun. We're definitely looking forward to that. And what do you guys think of these two? Should I keep them or race them? I don't know that they would do too well on the track because of the exhaust. Pretty neat set though. So we'll take a little look at some of the collection that we've put up since the last time we did this. And um, some of Isaiah's artwork here from years gone by. We are certainly excited to have cars in the race over at 3D Bot Maker as well. Um, my GNX kind of got the shaft on that first race, but we have Isaiah's Mustang hopefully coming up before next season. So we'll go check out the other part of the collection on the flip side of this. Faster than ever Corvette and FTE Kenner Fast Ones Corvette. Pretty even. Pretty even. Right, so, just real quick, the Fast and Furious. I don't even know what I got up there anymore. I'm wondering if there's any speed on that wall. Then there's the 50th anniversary wall, which I probably will be going through some of these basics and sending them down the track. Of course, the evasive Volkswagen from the 50th, 5th anniversary. We have scalpers in this town, big time. Some anniversary cars. Probably one of my favorites here. The Forza Collection. Of course, 50th anniversary. That was a neat find. Finding those in the stores. And some of the two packs. Pretty neat piece here. I like to just hang around for the collection. One of the chase. And some two packs. I think I stopped collecting these after I picked up the snake and mongoose. I don't even have the other two of that set, but they're fine. They may be going up for sale on the eBay. And then, of course, some of the premiums that we have. And the only collection that I'm really wanting to complete is the Boulevard series. Uh, we have almost every one of these. And um, it's taken a while to get them. And some of them were very hard to get. And uh, like this set, I think, is when COVID hit. Number 36 to 41, I do not have. So, you know, we have to find them, trade them. But we got most of them. There's some nice cars in these sets. Some of them don't even fit on the track like this one here. Does not fit. This one. Thank you, Brandon. 
and uh, found that one. Surprised to find a couple of these. You know, don't know what I'm going to do with these scissors. I don't have a scissor track. I don't have a charger. I got these because they were really cheap. Don't know if they have any speed at all. Never ran one. Uh, they may they may be hitting my eBay store soon. Of course, we got another Captain America. Got to keep one of him. Oh, yeah. The drag strip. Definitely had to have this series. A couple of these will be in an upcoming Real Rider race. And the Japanese Historics 3. I don't have the first two sets, but... This one may be... I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to race this set. Or put them up for sale. So, from all of us here at Elevation Diecast Racing, thank you for liking, subscribing, participating in the races... And if it isn't fast, at least it'll look good on the shelf. See ya.